Welcome to the Young Storytellers. Uh. Hi, everyone. I'm Madeline, and I cannot wait for this week's club group meeting. Hi, everyone. My name is Cleo, and it's great to have everyone back. Hey, guys. I'm Randy, and I'm so excited for this week's lesson. Hi everyone, my name is Elise, and I'm so glad you could join us this week. I think you'll really enjoy our lesson this week. We are continuing our stories with our characters this week, but our scenario will be a little different than last week. Yes, and in preparation for our scenario, I think we should talk a little bit about conflict resolution. Having some extra knowledge will help us write our story. Great idea, Randy. Let's remind everyone about our characters before we get started. All right. So my character is named Mauro. He's 11 years old, and whenever he feels bad, he becomes invisible. So he doesn't have a lot of self-control yet over his superpower. And then he doesn't see very well, but he loves anything colorful. My character's name is Sage. And she is 16 years old. She's from Chicago. Her father was a former superhero and her special power is to know when people are going to do bad things that could harm others. Her role is to help prevent those things from happening to save the day and the world. Korean is my character and is 14 years old. Instead of he or she, Clarion prefers using they to refer to themselves. Their special power allows them to manipulate minds, but Clarion doesn't like to use it. They'll only use it at the most desperate times to help others. Jojo is the name of my character. She's a 17 year old whose superpower is that no one can say no to her. This allows her to get what she wants in order to fix a situation. All right, so now that we were able to reintroduce our characters, let's begin. So far in the Young Storytellers Club, we have gone over world building, character development, and story arcs. These are all important parts of developing a story, but now we need to talk about how to solve the issues in the stories that we create. This is called conflict resolution. Conflict resolution is a way for two or more groups of people to find a peaceful solution if they have a disagreement. And this disagreement, it can be personal, financial, political, or emotional. When an argument arises, often the best course of action is negotiation to resolve the conflict. Negotiation is a difficult world word. Let's talk a bit about what it means. Negotiation can look like having a discussion about a disagreement where one person or a group of people see things very differently than the other person or group of people. And the difference between both are so important that both groups or both individuals have to be on the same page to move forward peacefully. And this requires really good communication. So let's walk through step-by-step step one way in which you could deal with conflict resolution. First step is to success to, um, the first step to successful conflict resolution is identifying the problem causing the conflict. This is important so that everyone has an understanding of what is causing the conflict. And then the second step to successful conflict resolution is hearing each person's feelings or thoughts about what is causing the conflict. This is important to avoid miscommunications with everyone who's involved. It's also good to know to avoid um, future repetitions of the same disagreement. The third step to a successful conflict resolution is to identify how the problem impacts everyone. Based on this, based on that, this leads to the fourth step to decide whether the conflict is worth being resolved. Typically, if you are discussing it, it is something that should be resolved. The last and final step is to communicate on both sides on what the resolution is and how it can be achieved from both groups or both individuals. The most effective way is to communicate a, a clear way that it can be implemented and how to avoid similar situations in the future. And if you follow all these steps, your conflict should be resolved. So now that you know the steps for conflict resolution, 
I want you to pay very close attention to whether you can see these steps in our upcoming scenario. All right, so this week with our story scenario, we wanted to visit a place that a lot of us visit weekly, the grocery store. Our group of characters is gonna be visiting the supermarket in preparation for next week's adventure. Yeah, next week we are going to do a picnic by the side of the lake. So this week we are getting groceries for the picnic. How do you feel about going to the grocery store? I know that I myself can often feel very overwhelmed in the store, especially if it's a big grocery store. Um, sometimes it's very hard to find everything that I need. I don't know. I kind of like grocery shopping. I know it's just a chore, but I always feel like it's a fun errand to run compared to other chores like doing laundry. Okay. So let's take a minute to think now about how your character feels about being in the supermarket and why. Do they like it? Why or why not? Take a minute. All right, everybody ready? Yep, sounds good. Sage really likes the grocery store because it has all of her favorite snacks there and she's always able to persuade her mom to put all of her favorite junk food in the basket. Jojo also likes the grocery store because she enjoys being in crowds of people. She's very extroverted, so she likes to be surrounded by others, especially when she runs in the people she knows at the store. Mauro also likes the grocery store. Um, and for him, it's because he associates it with family time. So every Saturday, he would do groceries with his mom and his older sister. And to make it fun for the kids, each of them would get to pick out one treat from the store for helping do the groceries. So Mauro would often be thinking all week about what he was going to get that week. Chips or candy or maybe some flavored peanuts or popcorn. Clarion dislikes the grocery store because it's usually really loud and crowded. And being around people makes Clarion nervous. So Clarion tries to go at the early mornings to avoid people. What about you? We'd love to hear how your character feels about the supermarket and why. Okay, so our group of characters is in this grocery store gathering supplies for their picnic at the lakeshore next week. Some characters are happy to be here, others less so. All of a sudden, Sage has a premonition. Sage's superpower is to know when someone is going to do something bad. Sage warns the rest of the characters that the power is about to go out, so they'll be in the supermarket in the dark very soon. Oh no, that's bad. That, it might lead to chaos because no one will know what to do. We'd better make sure the power turns back on quickly, because if it stays out, all of the food in the frozen and refrigerated sections will go bad, and that would be such a waste. Does Sage know why the power will go out? Will, will the electricity just go out all over Madison or is it is it just a store? Actually, just in the store. An, an employee is really angry and they're going to turn off the power switch for the whole store so that they can go home from work. All right, let's quickly make a plan. Mauro can sneak off into the back of the store to turn the switch back on. And then probably if someone sees him in like the employee only section of the store, he'll feel bad, but he'll turn invisible if that happens. So he should be able to get all the way to the back to turn the switch back on. Hey, yeah, that's a great idea. The employee might get angry though that the power goes back on. 
maybe the rest of our characters, so Sage, Clarion, and Jojo, can try to find that employee. Okay. So Mauro is on his way to the back of the store to go find the switch while the other characters do that. And right as we make that plan, the lights flicker and go out. It's completely dark for a couple of seconds in the big grocery store. Thankfully, most people have their phones with them and can turn on their flashlights. So Mauro enters the stock rooms at the back of the store and he sees the angry employee go back into the store. He's passing him. And since it's dark in the stock room too, um, and most employees are in the front of the store trying to calm down customers, nobody sees them sneaking in. Um, helped by Sage's premonition, the rest of our characters find the angry employee who's on his way to the exit to leave the store. Meanwhile, Mara is in the back trying to find the switch and he sees a light in the back and moves towards that. It turns out to be the switch. The switch has battery powered emergency lighting on it so that it's really easy to find in an emergency like this. In the store, the lights turn back on and all of the freezers and fridges start humming again as it. I'm gonna say that one more time. In the store, the lights turn back on and all the freezers and fridges start humming again as they power up. All of the customers in the store clap. They don't know that it's just a kid who turned the power back on. They're just happy to see again. Sage asks the employees what's going on and why he turned the power off for the store. However, he doesn't answer her. So Clarion decides to use her superpower. When Clarion asks, the employee has to answer because that's their superpower. People have to do as they say. So Clarion says, Please, tell us why you turned off the switch. The employee first looks really angry and says, It's not safe for us to be here. Haven't you noticed that people aren't keeping distance from one another? I could get COVID working here, so I want to go home. But my manager says I won't get paid if I go home. Then the store manager shows up. She looks really angry, too. Uh-oh. Oh, yeah. So we've got two angry people here. The employee used to work in the store with COVID going on, and the manager who's angry that the employee turned off the power, which is not good for business. All right. So let's take a minute to think about how our characters might help the employee and the manager solve their conflict. We're at step one now, where we've We've identified that there's a conflict about COVID safety measures in the store. So let's take a minute. Okay, so is everyone ready? Yep. Okay, so Sage's superpower is to know when bad things are going to happen. So she is just going to monitor their conversation so that she can break them apart if they start fighting or anything like that. That way, no one will get seriously hurt or do anything that they might be sorry for later. That's a great idea. Okay, so Mauro doesn't think that his superpower to become invisible will really help here. However, he thinks he don't always need superpowers for conflict resolution. So he's gonna step in and suggest that we all go to the employee break room so that we have a calm environment to talk in. That way, we can also take a minute while walking there to all get our breathing under control and feel calm. Yeah, so once we get to the break room, Jojo asks the manager to follow her to the office and asks the manager to explain the situation to her. People can't say no to JoJo, so the manager tells JoJo all about how bad it is for the store when the lights go out, and how worried she was, and that that's why she's so angry right now. 
And once she's done talking, she looks visibly calmer because she got to say what was on her mind to someone neutral. I love that. It fits right in with step two of conflict resolution, listening to feelings. What about the employee's feelings though? Clarion had a similar plan. So they talked to the employee and asked him what he would need to feel safe at work. He mentioned a couple of ideas. For example, right now, he had noticed that not everyone is wearing face masks, even though it is mandatory. He saw at another store that there was someone at the front door checking that people had masks and giving out disposable face masks to any customer who came in without one. All right, that makes sense. So do you think they're ready to talk to each other? Yeah, I think so. Talking with Jojo calmed the manager down, and the employee isn't shouting anymore or trying to leave. Okay, so let's bring them back together then. The employee starts by apologizing for turning off the power. Now that he's more calm, he realizes that that was a bit drastic. And the supermarket manager is really happy with the apology, and it makes her feel a lot more willing to work together with the employee. Okay, so now that their feelings are calm again, um, are they maybe ready to move to step three, impact? The employee already understands that his action of turning off the power had a lot of impact on the store's business. That's why he already apologized. So it seems that they already got started on that step of, the con of conflict resolution. Right, and the store manager is now realizing how safe the employee felt and that he panicked because of it and took it too drastic of an action. So she gets, the, gets that co the COVID. Okay, so like, um, like Madeline was saying, the manager um, is realizing that the employee panicked because, um, because of how unsafe he felt. And because he panicked, he took too drastic of an action. Um, so she gets that the COVID pandemic is having a lot of impact on how the employee is feeling. So she asks him how they can work together to make the store safer during the pandemic. So with her asking him how they can work together to make the store safe, they're already in the final step of conflict resolution, working together to resolve the problem. He tells her the idea about handing out face masks to people who come in without one. And she says immediately that they should start doing that because the disposable face masks are in their supply anyway, and they're not expensive at all. He also has a new idea. There's a lot of work that can easily be done before and after hours when the customers are in the store like restocking shelves. He asked if the employees who are particularly vulnerable or who have a vulnerable family member can work different hours so that they can be in the store working when there are no customers. So the manager has to think about that a bit, but she thinks it might be possible. Then she asks if he has any more ideas and she apologizes that earlier, before he turned off the power, she just told him to get back to work without really listening to why he was so upset and without really talking with him. He feels a lot better now too. He's really happy his manager also apologized to him and listened to his ideas. So I guess we can say that the conflict is now resolved. They're both ready to keep working together and the supermarket, the grocery store, will have been made safer because of it. When they are done talking, they realize that all of our characters are still in the break room listening to their conversation. Sage is really happy that she didn't have to break up a fight. Yeah, so the manager and the employee thank the characters for helping them solve their problems, and they promise to keep working together on COVID safety in the store. So our characters can finish their shopping adventure for next week's picnic. Nice, so let's wrap up then. So today we talked about conflict resolution, and then we did our second scenario. Now that we're finished, we want to hear your characters' responses. How did they feel about being in the supermarket or the grocery store? Also, how will your character help the employee and the manager solve their conflict? Well, how your character would engage 
the situ in the situation in the supermarket and how they would use communication along with their superpowers in order to solve the conflict. Please upload an explanation of what your character would do in either paragraph, picture, or video form. We cannot wait to hear your responses. Until next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.